this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look introduction to bonds. We would look at bonds issued at par, discount, and premium. This topic is covered in financial accounting as well as intermediate accounting. If you don't feel that this explanation went, went in depth as much as you would like to, please check out my intermediate accounting explanation for the bonds. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist, subscribe, let the world know about them, connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to help you study for the CPA exam and supplement your accounting education. So what is a bond and what would the bond looks like? So this is a bond. A bond is technically a piece of paper. So let's go over the bond here because it's, I want you to see the bond. I want you to see the bond. I want you to touch the bond. So it will be easier for me to explain this. So a bond is a piece of paper that the company issue, issue means we're gonna be using this term a lot in this session, issue means sell issue so when we say issue it means they sold it they 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 released it they issued it they issue to lenders so you uh, McDonald issued this co McDonald's corporation this is the issuer company issued the bond to lenders who are the lenders lenders are people who who are willing to who are willing to lend money so what pictures are we looking at here here McDonald's is issuing a $100,000 bond, okay, to raise money, $100,000 bond. So this is the amount that they're trying to raise, 100,000. So the par value, the dollar amount is listed on the bond. Notice it's $100,000, we call it par value. Now this bond represent 100 bonds. How did I know it represent 100 bond? Because each bond is $1,000. So if, if each bond is 1,000 and the full amount is 100,000, it means we have 100 bonds. So what we're looking at here is a bond is a piece of paper that represents 100 bonds. That, that piece of paper could represent one bond, two bonds, or 100 bonds. So it represents 100 bonds. The stated rate is another component of the bond, the stated rate or the contract rate. Sometimes it's called the stated rate, sometimes it's called the contract, sometimes it's called the coupon rate as well. So there are many names for it. Contract, coupon, stated. What does that mean? It means if you give McDonald $100,000, McDonald will give you 8%. 8%. What does that mean? It means they're going to pay you 8%. However, the interest, it's going to be paid twice a year. So they're going to pay you 4%, then another 4%. So simply put, one important computation is this. How much cash you will get by owning this bond, by buying this bond. It's a $100,000 bond. We'll take the par value, copy this formula down, times the stated rate, 8% times one half. Now, why did I say one half? Because notice this bond pays interest semi-annually, one half. So rather than uh, rather than $8,000 one payment, you're going to get two payments of $4,000. So every six months, June 30th, you will get $4,000. December 31st, you'll get $4,000. So I'm just breaking down the component of the bond. So you have the par value. The par value is also called, let me just tell you, it's called the maturity value. And this is an important concept to understand in bonds. Maturity means that's the, that's the amount that you will get when the bond mature. When does the bond mature? There's a maturity date. Here's the maturity date, December 31st, 2021. It means on December 31st, 2021, you can take this piece of paper back to McDonald if you have it, if it's in your name, and ask them for your $100,000. They will only pay you $100,000 because what's printed on this bond? $100,000. What's printed is the par value, is the par value of the bond. You can only get back $100,000. And this is an important concept, and you will see why I'm emphasizing this point, because when you buy the, this bond, you, you will see shortly that you could pay more than 100000 
or less than 100,000, but you will get only $100,000 when you present that bond at maturity. So those are the basic pieces of a bond. So it's very important to understand them. Let's put them here on a, in, another, in another way to look at them. So bond is a form of financing. If McDonald wants to raise money, they can issue bond. They can sell bonds and get money in return. So the corporation, MCD, is the corporation. They will issue bonds to lenders, and the lenders will give them back the $100,000. We're going to assume they're going to give them back exactly $100,000. Then McDonald will have to pay the lenders $4,000 every six months. $4,000 every six months. Okay. So to compute the interest payment, we'll take the bond par value, which we talked about this, which is $100,000 times the contract rate or the stated rate. Remember the contract rate, the stated rate, the coupon rate which happens to be 8%, what McDonald is offering, times the time, since they pay interest semi-annually, we're going to multiply this by half. So every six months, McDonald will pay the holder of this $100,000 bond $4,000. $4, so those are the basic components of a bond. And we're going to look at them again one more time in a moment. Bond are traded. Now, once the company issue a bond, once the company issue a bond, the bond is traded just like stocks. It's you can you can sell it, uh, you can buy bonds, so on and so forth. So let's see how bonds are priced because that's an important thing for us. This is a bond for IBM. IBM is the bond. The rate is four percent. What is the rate? This is the stated rate or the contract rate. It means this bond pays four percent per year or if it's semi-annually, 2% semi-annually. The maturity is 42. What does 42 mean? It means it mature in year 2042. It means it mature in year 2042. Don't worry about the yield now because you won't be able to understand what the yield means until you have further understanding of this. The volume is 110. There was 110 bonds traded. The price, this is important. So this is important. So of this slide, you wanna get, if you wanna get anything, is the price of the bond. The price of the bond is expressed as a percentage of their par value. So if we're dealing with that bond that we, I showed you earlier, the par value is 100,000. If I take the par value, multiply it by 103.08%, 103.08%, 103 that's the price. That's the price of the bond. It means you have to pay 100, three thousand and eighty dollars this is the price of the bond we call this price of the bond premium and don't worry about this we're going to explain why it sells more than 100 percent shortly but it's very important to understand the pricing of the bond so if this bond is selling at 100 percent it means you have to pay one hundred thousand dollar if this bond is selling at 95 percent it means you pay $95,000 for this bond. So the price of the bond could be a premium above 100, exactly 100 or below 100. If it's above 100, we call it a premium. If it's exactly 100, we call it par. If it's below 100, we call it a discount. Hold on that. We're going to discuss why bond trade at those prices. So bond are securities, just basically like stocks, that can be purchased or sold in the securities market, basically Wall Street. They have a market to which is expressed as a percentage, as a percentage times the par. The closing price indicate that the IBM stock or the IBM bond, not stock, is being sold at 103.08% of face value, which is, I told you, the amount if you want to buy it. Now, don't worry about why it sells at a premium. We'll talk about this. Now, what we need to worry about is how to issue a bond. When a company issue a bond, and we're going to be dealing with this bond, so let's look at the component of the bond. What what are the components? On December 31st, 2019, McDonald issued the following bond. So we're dealing with this bond here. Par value of 100,000. It means if you buy this bond, we're going to give you back 100,000 when it matures. The contract rate or the stated rate is 8%. This is This is how much McDonald is willing to pay you. And we're going to pay you that semi-annually. It means June 30th and December 31st. So every every six months, we'll pay you 4% in a total of 8%. 
and the bond mature December 31st, 2021, and that's two years from now. So you buy this bond, you're going to get four interest payments because we pay interest twice a year, then you'll get your money back. First, let's issue the bond. And let's assume this bond sells at par. Now, don't worry why. We're going to explain why, why later. So the company will debit cash on December 31st, 2019, McDonald, and they will credit bonds payable 100,000. They recorded a liability of 100,000. Now, fast forward six months. Six months later, McDonald will have to pay the first interest payment. On June 30th, 2020, the issuer of the bond pays makes the first semi-annual interest payment of how much? 4,000, which is the par value times the stated rate times one half. So McDonald will debit bond interest expense 4,000. They will credit cash 4,000. And here's the computation of the cash amount. So this entry is made for six months until the bond matures, until the bond matures. Okay, now, when the bond mature, it matures two years later. On December 31st, 2021, the bond matures and the issuer of the bond pays the face value. You only pay, look, listen to me carefully, listen to me carefully. When the bond mature, when the company, when the, when the bond mature, they only have to pay the face value if they wait until maturity. And what's the face value? What was written on that bond? 100,000. Therefore, we debit the bonds payable to, to get it out of the books and we pay the, the lender 100,000. So simply put, this bond is now paid. We paid it. How much do we pay? We pay 100,000. We pay 100,000. Now let's talk about when a bond is sell, sells at a discount or premium. The bond that we looked at was selling at par. It means, it means McDonald wanted 100,000 and they got exactly 100,000. It's at par. Now let's explain the concept of a premium or a discount. Now, remember McDonald had a contract rate or a stated rate and McDonald says, I'm willing to pay 8%. If you don't if you don't believe me, look. McDonald says this is my stated rate. Notice it's printed on the bond. It's printed. That 8% is printed. It does not change. Once they say they're going to pay 8%, they're going to pay 8% until the bond mature. So let's assume let's not, let, let's not assume let's assume and we're working with this bond 8%. Now we're going to look at another rate. Now this is important for you to understand. So we have bond sets. So McDonald sets the rate at 8%. Then there is the market. What is the market? The market is all the other bonds that are similar to McDonald's. So when McDonald's sets this bond at 8%, if you are if you are a capital provider, if you are a banker, if you are an investor and you're interested in buying this bond, you ask yourself, McDonald is paying 8%. Let me take a look at the market. What is the market paying? Is McDonald paying as much as the market? If the answer is yes, so let's assume that's the case. Let's assume the market rate, everybody that's similar to McDonald is paying 8% and McDonald is paying 8%. So McDonald is paying 8% and McDonald is paying exactly what everyone is paying. So they're paying 8%. So the contract rate is 8% and everyone else is paying 8%. Well, if that's the case, if I'm an investor, whether I give them my money to McDonald or I give my money to somebody else in the market, if they're all paying 8%, I'm willing to only pay 100,000. So when your contract rate, when McDonald is offering 8% and everybody else similar to McDonald, we call it the market, is offering 8%, the bond sells at par. And this is what we looked at when we did the transaction a minute ago, we assume that the bond sells for one hundred thousand. Let's give me. Let me give you another scenario. Now let's assume the contract rates. We can we can change this eight percent, and let's assume the market rate. The market rate is ten percent, and you have money to invest. So let, we, we're done with the par value. Let's take a look at the second scenario. So McDonald MCD is offering eight percent. That's all what they can afford to pay. 4% every six months, but similar companies to MCD like Burger King, um, like Wendy's, they're, they're paying 10%. Well, guess what's going to happen? No investor in the right mind, they will pay McDonald $100,000. Why? Why wouldn't they pay them $100,000? Because if they do have $100,000, rather than giving it to McDonald and earn 8%, I can give it to someone else and earn 10 
So what happened to McDonald in the, under those circumstances? McDonald will have to lower their price of the bond. So McDonald will have to accept something less than $100,000. Under those circumstances, we say the bond sells at a discount. So McDonald will have to accept 98% or 97% or 99%, something below the price of the bond. Now, we're going to learn how to compute exactly the price of the bond later or you know, there's a way to compute this. But the point is you have to understand if your contract rate, if what you are offering is less than the market, then you, you're, you're not going to be able to get your par value. No one in the right mind will pay you the full 100,000 if they can take their full 100,000 and buy another bond that, pay, that pays them 10%. Now, let's work another scenario. Let's assume we're still dealing with the same bond. McDonald is paying eight and everybody else in the market is paying six. McDonald is paying eight and everybody else is paying six, similar to McDonald. Guess what's going to happen? McDonald will have a flood of investors, flood of people who are interested in buying their bond. Well, guess what? McDonald, they're not stupid. They know that's the case. Guess what they do? They will sell their bond at a premium. The price of the bond sells at a premium. It means the bond will sell at 103%, 104%, 105%. It's above 100%. Okay, why? Because McDonald is offering something that's very attractive. And what's why is it attractive? Because it's higher than the market. Then their bond sells at a premium. So it's very important to understand when the bond sells at par. Well, the bond sells at par when McDonald offers eight and everybody else similar to McDonald's offer eight. Well, whether I go to McDonald or somewhere else, I'm going to get the same bond. It sells at par, at par, and par means 100%. Now let's take a look at an example of how do we deal with a bond issued at a discount. So we're going to look at FILA issues the bond with the following provisions. Par value of 100,000, issue price 96.4. Now all what you have to know now is this is a discount bond. This is all what you have to know. Now how do we come up with this figure? That's a different story. The stated rate is eight. Now you know that the that if they're offering eight, the market must be offering more. The market is ten. Well, the bond will sell at a, the bond now. The bond will sell at a discount. Why? Because the market is offering more than Fila or more than McDonald. They pay interest on June thirtieth and December thirty first. They issue the bond December thirty first, twenty nineteen, and the bond mature December thirty first, twenty twenty one. Now we're gonna look at the issuance of the bond we're going to issue the bond and see the journal entries for a discount bond for a discount bond so let's take a look first at when we issue the bond so on december 31st we issue the bond how much are we going to get for this bond we're going to get 96.4 so if we take 100,000 times 96.4 we are going to get only 96,400 dollars in cash although What's printed on the bond is 100,000. So the difference between the par value, 100,000, and how much cash we received is called a discount. So this amount is the discount. Now let's look at the journal entry. So we debit cash only 96,400. This is how much cash we received. We credit the bond 100,000. Why do we credit the bond 100,000? Remember, whoever carries the bond, the bond has printed on it $100,000. So think of the MCD bond, McDonald bond. Remember what's printed on it is 100,000. So when somebody comes back in two years, it doesn't matter what we got initially for the bond. What matters is what's printed on that bond and we'll pay them for we pay them that amount. Therefore, our obligation is 100,000. That's very important. Students, they don't understand this concept. It's very important to remember. Now, the difference we said it's 3,600 and we call this a discount on bonds payable. So we, we have a new account called discount on bond payable. Discount on bond payable is a contra liability. What does that mean? It means it reduces the bond. So if the bond is 100,000, and we're going to now learn an important concept. Contra is reduces minus any discount that has not been amortized because we are going to amortize it. So if we take 100,000 minus 3,600, we get how much? We get 96,000 
400. So the bond face value or, par, well, let's use the term par value, but face value and par value are the same. Par value minus, minus any unamortized, it has not been amortized, we did not expense it yet, and amortize discount, so this is an important computation, gives us the carrying, we call it carrying or book value. I'm going to call it carrying because that's the term that they use. We call this carrying value. Carrying value of the bond. And this, this is going to become an important computation in the, in the next session. So, so 100,000 minus, minus the bond discount, it gives you the carrying value of the bond. And let me show you how things would look like. This is the carrying value of the bond that, that's on the balance sheet. Okay, now the question is, what do we do with this 3,600? That's the question. And what does this discount represent? Let's think about it for a moment. What does this discount represent? Really, this discount represents interest. Why? Because we tried to borrow 100,000. We were not competitive. We were not competitive. We could not offer an interest that's going to attract the investors. Because our interest rate was 8 Everybody else was paying 10. Therefore, we lost up front 3,600. We could not get that money. Well, this is basically part of our financing cost. It's part of our interest. But here's what we do. So this is basically the 3,600. Think of it as, think of it as kind of a prepaid interest. It's not prepaid interest, but think of it as interest that we paid up front. Why? Because we didn't get the money. So what do we do with interest? We are going to amortize the interest. In other words, we are going to take this 3,600 and we are going to spread it over the payments that we're going to be making. If we divide by four payments, now why four payments? Because this is a two-year bond and we're going to have four payments. If you take 3,600 divided by four, we are going to amortize two expense. Listen to me carefully. We're going to amortize two expense. So I'm going to write it up here. Amortize to expense and specifically to interest expense amortize to interest expense nine hundred dollars so when we make our first payment so focus with me on this journal entry right here when we make our first payment we are going to credit cash four thousand dollar which is the same the same that we did for the par value bond par value times one half times the contract rate this does not change this does not change because we promised to pay 8% or 4% semi-annually, it's going to be 4000 Now, we are going to amortize $900. Remember, we had this discount account. We have this discount. We have this discount. And in this discount, we had 3600 And what we did now, after six months, we're going to amortize. We're going to debit it 900 and by debiting 900 we have to credit something else we credit interest expense because now we are now we are counting this interest expense we are we credit this amount i'm sorry it's one second i made a mistake here the discount is a debit balance so give me one moment sorry so the discount is 3600 and we are going to amortize 900 so we credit the amount 900, we credit the discount 900, and we debit interest expense. So we credit the discount 900, and this 900 we add it to the interest expense. Therefore, the entry would look something like this. Credit cash, 4,000, this is how much cash you paid, the check that you wrote. However, your interest expense is 4,000 plus 900. Why plus 900? Because you have to amortize this 3,600. And how did you amortize means in, meaning taking the cost and spreading the cost equally over the payment using the straight line method. Now that's not the only method. There is the straight line method and there is the effective interest rate method. If you're interested in the effective interest rate method, go to my intermediate accounting course. I don't cover it in my financial accounting. I cover it in my intermediate accounting. Okay. Now, if I ask you how much, what's the total interest expense for this bond? What is the total interest expense? Here's what's going to happen. 
we're going to have four payments of $4,000, which is 1,000 times 8% times one half. And the company will have to make this payment four times. So 4,000 times four is, six, is 16,000. Plus, plus up front we lost 3,600 because of the discount. So the total interest expense is 19,600. Now, if we take 19,600 divided by four payment, our interest expense is 4,900, which is the same thing as I told you earlier. It's the cash payment plus the bond that you amortized, plus the bond that you amortized. So it's very important to know this. Now, when we have a discount bond, the discount bond is below the par value. So the carrying value started at 96,400. Notice here, when we started this bond, the carrying value was 90, 96,400. And the unamortized amount was 3,600 because this is how much unamortized amount we have. So let me show you in a T account how it looks like. So we have the discount here. And in the discount we had 3,600 initially. Then after one payment, we reduced the discount by 900. We reduced the discount by 900. Now. The carrying value goes up because now what we have is we have a $100,000 face value minus 2,700, which will give us 97,300. So the bond value goes up. Another six months later, we will reduce the discount again. As we reduce the discount, as we reduce the discount, the carrying value goes up again by 900. Then we reduce the discount again by 900 when we make the third payment. And the fourth payment, as you make the payment, the bond value goes up. It keeps going up until it reaches the maturity value. So always the bond goes back to its maturity value. So if it's below the below the maturity value, if we wait and we amortize all the discount as we did here, eventually the discount will go down to zero. The discount will go down to zero, notice. And the bond becomes at par value. The par value is 100,000. So this is the life of a of, of a discounted bond. Let's take a look at a premium bond. Assuming we're looking at an Adidas issued a bond for 100,000. The issue price is 103,600. You are giving the price. You don't have to compute the price. What does that mean? It means the stated rate was 12% for this example. So what does that mean? It means the market rate has to be lower. The market rate is 10 because the stated rate is higher than the, the higher than the market rate the bond is issued at a premium which is 103.6 this bond pays interest semi-annually bond issued date december 31st the maturity date is in two years december 31st 2021 now we're going to do the same thing with a premium bond with a premium bond we're going to issue the bond at 100 times 103.06 and the cash amount is 103,600. So actually we received more than 100,000. Why? Because everybody wanted to buy our bond. As a result, we got more than what we thought we will get. We got more than 100,000. Now we pay the price for that. What's the price that we paid? Well, we are offering higher interest rate. It means we have to make more cash payment. So simply put, the difference between the par value and the cash proceeds, it's called the premium. The premium is 3,600. Okay, but now it's a premium. Now let's look at the journal entry. Cash we received, 103,600. We always credit the bond for the par value. That's bond, par value is 100,000. The difference between the two, now it's called a premium. What type of account is the premium? The premium is an adjunct liability. So what are we going to do with this adjunct liability? We're going to amortize. We're going to spread. We're going to amortize. Look against interest expense we're going to amortize against interest expense against interest expense not to interest expense it's going to reduce our interest expense why is it going to reduce our interest expense in contrast to the discount the discount we amortized it to interest expense so every time we amortize that we increase our interest expense now the premium every time we amortize this 3600 every time we amortize a part of it it's going to reduce our interest expense and when do we amortize it over the life of the bond over the life of the payment the same concept now with the bond carrying value the bond plus notice plus any premium gives you the carrying value so this is the carrying value of the bond the carrying value of the bond is the bond 
which is the par value plus the premium. If it, was, if it was a discount, minus the discount, plus the premium. So this is the bond carrying value. So when we issued the bond, we debited cash 103,600. Again, we credit the bond payable exactly for the, for the, for the uh, par value and the difference is a premium. Now let's make our first interest payment. Well, our first interest payment, let's focus with me right here. First interest payment, this blocks here. The first interest payment, first is the cash. It's 100,000 par value times 12% times one half. And that's going to give us $6,000. So we have to write a check for $6,000. We credit cash $6,000. Now what we do, we have to amortize some of the premium. We have 3000 600 divided by 4 so every time we are going to every time we make an interest payment we're going to use 900 of the premium therefore we're going to debit 900 of the premium remember the premium is a credit account remember the premium is an adjunct liability adjunct means it, it's a, it's like a liability but it serve another liability the premium is 3600 now what I'm going to do, I'm going to debit this premium 900 when I make my first interest payment. And as I debit the premium, I credit my interest expense. So I debit the premium and I credit, I reduce my interest expense. So I debit the premium. I debit the premium and I credit interest expense. So notice I debit the premium. And rather than debiting 6,000 of interest expense, I only debit 5,100. Why 5,100? I paid 6,000 minus the premium that I received. So my interest expense is 5,100. Notice the interest expense is lower than the cash. Why? Because I got the money up front. And this entry would repeat itself four times. So every time I make a payment, and as it, re as it repeats itself four times, I, I will bring down the premium down to zero. So I'll get rid of the premium once the bond mature. Now, if I ask you, what is the total interest expense on this bond? Well, we pay $6,000 every four month, every six month. We make four payment. That's 24,000. Then we received 3,600 more for the bond. So we reduce the, we reduce our interest expense by the extra money. So our interest expense is 20,400. If we divide 20,400 by four payments, our interest expense should be 5100 which is the same computation that I showed you here. It's the cash minus any any discount, any discount that I have not, uh, minus any discount, minus any discount. Now, um, and this is the computation for the cash payment for this, how we come up with the 6000 I already did this for you. Okay, now the last thing is just like with the bond discount we have a premium bond amortization the carrying value when we issued the bond on 12 31 2019 was 103 600 and the bond and amortized premium was 3600 so if we take 100 thousand plus 3600 that's what gave us 103 600 but six months later we reduced the premium as we reduce the premium now the carrying value goes down because this goes down the carrying value goes down then we reduce the premium again by 900 the carrying value goes down we reduce the premium the carrying value goes down and once the premium go once the premium goes down to zero the bond goes back to its to its par value just like with the discount bond so always the bond if once it's properly amortized whether it's a premium or a discount if we wait till the end of its life the bond goes back to its par value. Notice the bond went back to its par value. So it was above par value and it went down to par value by amortizing the premium. For the discount bond, let's go back to the discount bond. The discount bond, let's go back to that table. The discount bond, the bond was below the par value. It went up to the par was below and it kept going up as we amortize it goes up until it goes back to the par value so that's why at the if the bond mature it will go up go back to its par value now and then if you like this recording please click on the like button share it subscribe in the next session i would we would look at bond retirement what is bond retirement bond retirement is when we buy back the bond 
As always, I would like to invite you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources, especially if you're studying for your CPA or, or you'd like to supplement your accounting education. Stay safe, especially during those, these coronavirus days. Good luck and study hard.